Safe Work Practices – The Difference Between Life and Death Safe work practices around electricity can mean the difference between life and death. Dangerous working conditions can turn deadly when employees try to take shortcuts or ignore the safety guidelines set forth by the applicable codes and standards. Consider the following scenario. A foreman, who was an employee of an electrical contracting company, was called in to install circuit breakers in the main distribution panel at a commercial construction site. Electrical power from the local power company was connected to the commercial building's main distribution panel via feeder lines. The foreman decided to install the circuit breakers without shutting down the power, as this would require a two to three days advance notice to the electrical utility. Moreover, the incoming tenants in the office building did not want to shut down their computer servers. The foreman regarded installing the circuit breakers to be a relatively simple process that could be accomplished safely by relying on personal protective equipment only. Two other foremen who were not wearing any personal protective equipment stood about 10 feet from the distribution panel that is outside the arc flash boundary for that piece of equipment. The victim reportedly wore leather gloves over rubber insulating gloves, arc flash headgear with a face shield, and an arc flash jacket. The foreman uneventfully installed the first circuit breaker. As the foreman moved to the second circuit breaker, he accidentally made contact with two phases of energized circuitry with a screwdriver at the three-phase distribution panel. This resulted in a blinding arc flash, followed by an explosion. The foreman was thrown backwards from the distribution panel due to the force of the explosion. He suffered first and second degree burns on his arms, legs, and back. The other two foremen who were standing outside the arc flash boundary apparently suffered no injuries. OSHA investigation into the incident concluded that the arc flash and subsequent injury could have been prevented by adhering to basic electrical safety principles. First and most importantly, the main distribution panel should have been placed in an electrically safe condition prior to the installation of circuit breakers. The apparent justifications for failing to de-energize electrical equipment in this incident, which focused solely on the inconvenience of shutting power off, does not meet the necessary conditions for working on or near energized electrical components under the NFPA 70E. Moreover, the victim who was designated by the contractor as a qualified person was neither adequately trained nor qualified to work on energized electrical components. The foreman's lack of training and understanding of electrical safety principles was evident from his belief that he could safely install circuit breaker boxes on the main distribution panel without de-energizing it and that personal protective equipment would be enough to shield him from electric shock or arc flash. While the protective equipment and clothing did protect the foreman to some extent, he still suffered serious burns on a large portion of his body. According to the hierarchy of controls, personal protective equipment must not be used as a first line of defense against electrical hazards. Instead, de-energization of energy sources is the preferred approach and personal protective equipment may be used as a last resort or may serve to provide additional protection. It is important to note that the two other foremen who adhered to the electrical safety-related work practices and maintained an adequate distance from the distribution panel came out unscathed from the incident. This example demonstrates that violations of the basic electrical safety requirements as set forth by OSHA and the NFPA can result in devastating consequences. Employees, supervisors, and managers must be adequately trained to increase their awareness and understanding of electrical hazards in their workplaces and the safe work practices for working around electricity.